A lot of machine knitting projects really benefit from having a little bit of weight on the fabric as you work. And sometimes it's important that that weight be stable and not shift. Recently, while designing this hat that employs garter stitch, I was wishing I had a weight that would stay put and not shift so it wouldn't jump off without warning while I was knitting garter stitch. So I invented one, and you can have one too in just a few minutes. The weight will be provided by pennies. So I've lined a sandwich bag, a Ziploc sandwich bag, with a row of pennies leaned over and spaced as evenly as I can get them. And now I'm going to try to lock them in that position by rolling this over. I don't think it's a disaster if they're imperfect, and I'm, but I'm going to try to start with them pretty perfectly placed. There we go. and tape the bag so that that little envelope at the bottom is pretty rigid. Now something rigid and the same width as the bag could be a piece of doweling wood, even a little ruler, but I had an ink pen that doesn't have any ink anymore. Because that's, the function of that is to keep this rigid and the same width at all times. And now if I roll the rest of the way up and tape the whole bag in position, I think things will stay pretty stable. Let's hope. We'll soon see. I'm going to add a little bit more tape off camera just to make sure it's secure, because this is going to be the last time I have easy access to this. I ran a line around the long dimension, and then a spiral line of tape, that is. Now, let's compare to this to the width of a batch of needles, and make, it a, make the batch that we use about as wide as my packet. That should do. I'm going to cast on normally using E-Wrap for the time. Now what I need to do is knit enough rows to encircle this dimension. And I'm just going to guess it hasn't got to be perfect. Also, I'm going to use the largest stitch size, 10 on this machine, because I don't want this fabric to pull in very much at the edges. I'm estimating that 16 rows will probably do it. We'll take a look when I've got that there. But a little bit of a weighted comb is going to help me do a nice job in this large stitch size. That was eight, and now if I hold the fabric up, I should be able to check my estimate, and I do believe it's going to be fine. So we'll do another eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, just as usual, making a hem, I'm going to hang those initially wraps. You can do it with your fingertips, but working in the position I'm working, I do believe a tool is going to make it much easier. We'll do this all the way across and close the hem. I split that stitch by accident. I have got it all hung and I'm going to hang the comb back on because working at a large stitch size, the little bit of extra weight just helps things knit off well. And I'm going to knit two rows. Now what I want is an every other needle comb. A rag. This is really a rag. 
so I'll transfer so that that's what we've got. It's a good idea to start with an odd number of needles because that will mean that your transfers work out smoothly. And now it's time to bind off. The bind off is what will actually hang in the future. I moved the camera so that I can bind off and you can see at the same time. But from time to time, one of my hands may get in your way. I'm sorry. Now we're actually going to put the needles that are not in work back into work and bind off around them too. This is binding off around the gate pegs so that will work. We'll just pretend there's a stitch. Here there really are stitches. Here there's not, but we can make a chain stitch anyway. I do have another whole video on binding off. The fact that the needle is forward can serve as a reminder that I need to do something there. But really and truly, it doesn't have to be there. Let me move the next few out of the way. Do what works for you. Can you see? Yes, I believe you can. Two loops are getting bound off. A chain around the gate peg where nothing's really happening. Two loops are getting bound off. A chain stitch that just goes around the gate peg. I've zoomed way in to give you a better view, or so I hope. Two loops getting bound off. The movement of my left hand is eccentric here. It's not the way you would really be using your left hand. It's because I'm trying to make sure that you have a clear picture. My hand really needs to be here, but that wouldn't do you any good. So, don't think it's going to feel as awkward as it looks. Nothing going on there. So we just make a chain stitch. These two are really getting bound off. chain stitch, and here we have just one on the far end. Now I'm going to cut this yarn and leave a good size tail because we need to do a little sewing. So snip, pull through, and release. And this is what we have to work with. We'll be hanging in the future these holes on every other needle. Now here we have our open ends and here's the yarn tail that I purposely left long. And you can use either a yarn needle or your latch tool to make a seam. We need to close that end. and bury the yarn tail. This excess can get snipped off now. I need to sharpen those snips one of these days. Now is when we use our homemade weight bar. Slide it into the hem. That's going to work great. Off camera, I'm going to sew the other end shut so the whole thing stays stable. Now let's set up to actually use this. Remember, these are set up to hang on every other needle. And we can 
use a total of a 20 needle span, but we'll hang on every other. I got that in the wrong hole. There we go. One. I hung that with my fingers, but I'm feeling like it's going to be easier with a tool. The hope is that this will create a weighted hem that's stable and attached so that when you're doing something like garter stitch, which I plan to do shortly, and you have to turn the fabric to and fro, the weights that you just hang in it, which I like and I normally use, here's one I like a lot, but I don't like it for this kind of project because it's too easy for it to become disturbed. But now I'm ready to knit in a row of ravel cord. I'm going to use this thin green cotton yarn as my ravel cord. There we go. Now it will be permanently attached to whatever I do next. And I can cast on normally and knit on. And I will do that. I've moved my carriage to the right just because I prefer to cast on from left to right, especially on camera. I just find it a little bit smoother of motion for me. Oh my goodness. My tripod's in my way and I'm doing the best I can. You know we wrap is easier than this. Okay, now we're all ready to knit the rest of the project, whatever it may be. Now, of course, any time we use any sort of cast on comb and ravel cord, will get the same advantage of being able to pull out that ravel cord and get a neat edge. The difference is if we're doing something such as um, garter stitch, which I mentioned, which I'll be showing you in the next video with this very cast on rag, um, or short rowing, which I'll actually show you a little bit of now. As one side gets shorter, the whole setup gets less stable and leans to one side. And if I were using a normal claw weight or bar weight, it would tend to get disturbed. But it's not going to with this. Hanging at quite an angle, but still firmly attached. Here I've knitted down to a shortest row of one single stitch and the angle is very pronounced but because of the way we worked our cast on weight it's still stable and attached and it's not threatening to jump off the knitting. That's why this little trick is a help. Of course I know you already know how to remove ravel cord but let's do it together. I'm not sure if this will pull out in one try because it's not slick but it did. So here we are. This is the pretend garment and of course the hem is perfect. But the main point is that we have now freed our weighted hem for use in another project soon. In fact, really soon. In the next video, I'll use this to do garter stitch. You'll find many more tools that you can make yourself in the Cool Tools, Cheap Tricks and More book available on my website.